Good afternoon. We are back on the record after our uh, lunch recess. We're uh, in the presence of the jury. The defendant, Mr. Behema, is present along with the uh, attorneys of record. Uh, the state of Iowa may call its next witness. Our next witness is Mike Fischel. Step over here and I'll swear you in, please. I you to raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you guide? I do. Okay. Go ahead over there. See it if you would, sir. Agent uh, Fischels, can you please uh, state your name for the record? Michael Fischels. How do you spell your last name? F-I-S-C-H-E-L-S. And how are you employed? I am a special agent with the Department of Homeland Security, Homeland Security Investigations. And how long have you been a federal agent? Uh, since 1996, about 25 years. Okay. Are you getting ready to retire? I am. All right, when does that happen? At the end of July. Um, can you just uh, describe your uh, duties with uh, Homeland Security? Uh, duties include uh, enforcing Title 8, 18, Title 19, Title 21 of the United States Code, enforcing the Immigration and Nationality Act. Um, those codes involve drug smuggling, drug trafficking, alien smuggling, alien trafficking, um, shipping in and out of the United States, uh, counterfeit goods, and of course immigration offenses. Okay. And um, over the course of your career, um, well, let me ask you this. What's your current duty station? Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And how long have you been there? Uh, since 2005. Okay. What other places have you worked as a federal agent? What other cities? Prior to Cedar Rapids, I worked in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Prior to that, I worked in Douglas, Arizona. And prior to that, I worked in San Clemente, California. Uh, do you speak Spanish? I do. Uh, how would you rate your proficiency? Uh, I consider myself proficient in the language. Okay. Would, if there was a native uh, Spanish speaker, could you carry on a conversation with that person? Yes. Okay. And um, what's your uh, educational background? I graduated from Iowa State University in 1995 with a major in sociology, a minor in Spanish, and a minor in criminal justice. And have you been able to put that minor in Spanish to good use in your career? Yes, I have. Uh, do you frequently speak Spanish uh, with other persons in your job? Yes, I do. When did you become involved in the investigation relating to the disappearance of Molly Tibbetts? I received a call for assistance from the DCI on August 19th of 2018. And what was your uh, role to be in that in the investigation? Uh, the DCI had notified me that uh, they were requesting our assistance uh, from our agency uh, for the following day on the 20th uh, to canvas uh, a couple areas uh, in the area, um, specifically Yerby Farms. Was there any particular person that was identified to you that you were to be looking for in this canvas? Uh, during a briefing prior to going to Yerby Farms, uh, they had told us that there was a vehicle that had been spotted, um, a vehicle of interest, um, and that they were looking for that vehicle and a uh, potential driver of that vehicle. Did the potential driver of that vehicle have a Spanish name? Yes, he did. And what was that? Christian Bahina Rivera. And maybe you mentioned this already. What was the type of vehicle that you were to be looking for? It was a black Chevy Malibu. All right, so where did you go then on August 20th of uh, 2018 in order to assist in the investigation? Uh, we went to the Powhatan County Sheriff's Office for a briefing, and after that, we departed the Sheriff's Office for Yerby Farms. All right, and how many officers were present at the briefing at the Sheriff's Office? I can't say exactly, maybe 20 to 25. Okay, so if you were going down to Yerby Farms to canvas, that means what exactly? To speak, one, with the company to start with. Uh, two, to speak to the employees or other individuals that may be on the property uh, about the vehicle, um, about the disappearance, and, and anything that, that uh, DCI 
was seeking at that point. Okay. And in addition to that, uh, you were hoping to find uh, Christian Bahena Rivera? Yes. All right. Is this uh, Mr. Bahena Rivera, the defendant, somebody that you knew prior to the 20th of August? No. What time did you go to Yerby Farms on August 20th of 2018? I believe it was about 1 or 1.30 in the afternoon. And whenever you arrived at the farm, uh, tell the jury what you first did. Um, I, I sat in my vehicle uh, while uh, agents from the DCI contacted the company owners. Um, once they were contacted, we were given the go-ahead uh, that we could speak to anybody on the property, including the employees. At that point, um, I went with a DCI agent and began to, to speak to uh, employees at the farm. Did you go, was that agent Scott Green? Yes, it was. All right. So you did not enter the property of Yerby Farms to talk to any workers without permission? Correct. Which you say that you were granted, correct? Yes. Uh, at some point while you were at Yerby Farms, uh, was the defendant located? Yes, he was. Was he located by you or other officers? Other officers. Okay. Were you provided a central location at Yerby Farms in order to speak to the people that you needed to speak to in the canvas? Yes, we were. And what? where was that? It was a building that was centrally located on the farm. Um, kind of a, a big open room. Uh, I believe I, I saw like the time clock there, um, a place for uh, employees to hang up their coats. Uh, it also had what appeared to be a, a break room um, and, and maybe like a small locker room for boots and shoes. Okay. Did this provide adequate space for you to speak with uh, the farm workers? Yes. All right. Um, at some point while you're at uh, this central location, this room you described, did the defendant arrive? Actually, he was there when I arrived at that building. Okay. So where was he, the defendant, whenever you first arrived at the building? He was standing with other employees in the larger room of that building. Did you speak to him first or did you speak to others? Uh, I didn't speak to any of the other employees there uh, in that room. I only spoke to him in the little break room, which was separated from the big room. And were you able to speak to him in Spanish? Yes, I was. Uh, were you able to understand the defendant? Yes, I was. Did he appear to understand you? Yes, he did. How would you describe his demeanor at the time that you encountered him uh, at the uh, at the building that you just described? Uh, he was calm, uh, not nervous, um, cooperative. Hey, and the room that you met with him in, was it separate from the larger room? Yes, it was. Uh, were you in there with him by yourself or with other officers? I was in there uh, with another DCI agent. Was that Scott Green also? No, it was not. Um, initially, did you discuss with the defendant uh, vehicles that were associated with him? Yes, we uh, did. There were two, correct? Correct. Uh, you had indicated earlier that you were looking for a black Chevy Malibu, but was there another car that um, he was associated with him? Yes. Uh, that day he was driving a Nissan Altima, which was parked at the farm. Is that the first you'd heard of a Nissan Altima was whenever he told you what he was driving? Yes, it was. Um, where did you ask the defendant where the black Chevy Malibu was located? We did ask him about the black Chevy Malibu. And what did he say? He stated that the, the Malibu was parked at his residence or his trailer, which was located just down the road from the farm. And do you know how far his trailer was from the farm location where you were at? As he described it to me at that point, it was only about five minutes down the road. Uh, did you obtain consent to search uh, the black Chevy Malibu? Yes. Who provided that to you? Mr. Uh, Bahina Rivera. Did you also obtain consent to search the Altima if that became necessary? Yes. And who provided you that consent? Mr. Bahina Rivera. 
Was there any other consent uh, with regard to uh, his residence uh, that he maintained uh, near the farm? Um, Mr. Bahina Rivera actually told me during the interview that he had received a phone call from someone uh, seeking permission to uh, search the trailer and or the Malibu um, and he granted that uh, permission or consent to, to search uh, but I don't know who he talked to. Okay. So he had consented to have you search his trailer as well? Correct. Or his residence I should say? Correct. So after the forms uh, were signed, after you obtained um, the defendant's consent, uh, did you ask him to come to the sheriff's office to be interviewed? Yes. What was his response to that? He agreed to come down to the sheriff's office and continue an interview. While you were in his presence, was there um, Let me back up. Uh, one more question with the car overlooked. So did you have a discussion with him as to uh, who the black Chevy Malibu was registered to? Yes. Uh, what what uh, did he tell you with regard to that? He said that the Malibu was registered to a female, his cousin, uh, by the name of Arelli. So, um, Agent Fischels, uh, did you also talk, or was there any discussion with uh, the defendant while you were in his presence about Molly, Molly Tibbetts? Yes. D did you or someone else in your presence ask him if he knew her? Yes. Uh, what was his response? He stated that he did not know her, uh, he had not seen her, um, but he mentioned something about Facebook. Was he asked a subsequent time whether or not he had um, known or been in the presence of Molly Tibbetts? Yeah, I believe he was asked again. And what was his response? Uh, I don't remember. Um, I remember him specifically just saying that he did not know her. Okay. Um, Agent Fischels, did you have any um, participation in the subsequent interview of the defendant at the Powsheet County Sheriff's Office? No, other than uh, taking an index fingerprint of Mr. Bahina Rivera uh, while he was in the interview room there, I, I did not participate in the interview. Okay. Did you continue to assist in the investigation? Yes. I'll have. Thank you very much. The defense may cross examine. Thank you. Agent officials, uh, just so I'm clear, Mr. Bahena was cooperative, right? That's correct. You wanted to search his car, and he said, okay, correct? That's correct. You asked him who the car was registered to, and he was truthful about that, correct? That's correct. He told you about a second car that he saw in Altima, and that was true, correct? Correct. And before he even left his employment, he had granted someone permission to search his home, correct? Correct. And he had been made aware that this search was somehow connected to the disappearance of Molly Tibbetts, correct? Uh, I didn't make him aware of that. Uh, whether he assumed that or not, I, I don't know. Well, at least the name Molly Tibbetts had come up in conversation. That's correct. And were you the one who asked him for a cheek swab? No, sir. But he gave a cheek swab, correct? I don't know. Are you aware of any other employees at Yerby Farms that day gave a cheek swab? I'm not aware. Now, when you asked Mr. Behena to go to the sheriff's office, you recall that conversation, correct? Yes, sir. His employer uh, was there as well, was he not? Yes. And Mr. Behena agreed to go to the sheriff's office, but he wanted to clear it with his employer, correct? That's correct. Do you recall the conversation that uh, Mr. Behena said he would go so long as his employer approved, correct? Yes, sir. And his employer said he wanted to ch clear it with Mr. Mahaffey, an attorney in Montezuma, right? Yes, he said he was going to call Mr. Mahaffey. 
And you then conveyed that to Mr. Bahena, right? Yes. And you also told Mr. Bahena that he will call the attorney of, of your company for you as well. You don't need it, but for him he wants to. Is that what you said? Yes, sir. So you told Mr. Bahena he didn't need a lawyer. I told him he didn't need the company attorney. Okay. And after that, Mr. Bahena went to the Powasheet County Sheriff's Office and gave a statement. Yes, sir. That's all I have. Thank you. Do you have anything further to this one? So one other thing. Whenever you talk to uh, the defendant about, um, or somebody in your presence, talk to the defendant about Molly, do you recall that? Yes, sir. Um, he was asked specifically, do you know her? What was his response? I can't recall specifically or exactly what he said. That's okay. Can I please approach the witness to refresh his memory? You may. May I stay up here, Judge, for a moment? All right. Um, Agent Fischels, the question was, do you know her? What was his response? No, I have never seen her. Okay. And then the, there was a clarification question, did you see her at any time? Do you recall his response to that? No, I don't. All right, I'll let you look at that as well. So the question was, did you, does that refresh your memory? Yes, it does. And did you see her at any time? And what was his response? No, not at any time. He also said just on the television. Is that correct? Correct. All right. That's all. Any recross? No, sir. Sir, thank you for being here. You're excused. State may call its next witness. State calls Scott Green. Swear you in. Do you swear or affirm the testimony about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to so help you God? Yes, I do. Okay. Make your way over there if you would, please. Mr. Claver, you, when you're ready, you can proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Do you state your name, please? Uh, Scott Green. Who do you work for? A division of criminal investigation. And what do you do there? I'm in Special Enforcement Bureau, which is currently the Gaming Bureau for the state of Iowa. And how long have you held that position? Uh, 11 years. Do you have any other law enforcement experience? Yes, I came out in 1993 and started as a special agent, G gaming enforcement officer for the state of Iowa, and then uh, promoted within a year into uh, in the Gaming Bureau at the time, and then transferred to narcotics for 11 years, and then four and a half years for a major crime unit with the DCI. Can you describe your training and experience as it concerns your employment? Um, I've had various trainings throughout my career through narcotics investigations, um, interviews, search warrants, entries. During a major crime unit, we went through homicide school um, and various uh, crime scene schools. And what are your duties as a special agent, if you haven't covered them already? Uh, currently, I do uh, investigations into the uh, backgrounds for corporations that invest in Iowa gaming. So we do uh, corporate interviews of executives and so forth and so on for their uh, suitability with the state of Iowa. In addition to other criminal investigations that occur at the casinos. Agent Green, on August 20th of 2018, were you asked to assist in a canvas of Yerby Farms? Yes, I was. Do you recall when you went, approximately what time you um, went to the farm? On that day, approximately 1.39 p.m. And what was the purpose of that canvas? Um, to conduct a canvas of the uh, farm hands and workers that uh, currently are working at Yerby Farms. And were you looking for 
any person in particular? Yes, we were. We were looking for a subject named Christian and then looking for a black uh, Malibu. Were there other agents with you? Yes, there were. Do you know who they were? Yes, I do. Approximately how many agents were with you? Uh, approximately six to seven. Did you get permission from the farm to talk to its employees? Yes, we did. Did you find uh, Christian Bahena Rivera at the farm? Yes, we did. Do you speak Spanish? Uh, very little. Did you have any conversations with the defendant at Yerby Farms? Uh, just uh, when I was uh, taking and giving him a ride to the sheriff's office, we talked just about the weather, and that's about it. When I go back to the farm prior to your transport of the defendant, did you find anything of interest um, at the farm? Uh, we were. I was doing an interview with a farmhand, and then they had, that farmhand identified that uh, Christian Rivera was going to be found in the milk parlor about 30 yards away, and identified a vehicle that he had driven to that property. And what vehicle was on the property? Uh, brown Nissan Altima. Did you search that Altima? Uh, visually, did a search of the in, in, ex interior. Was there anything in the vehicle at that time? Uh, there were running shorts in the front seat and like a gray pipe in the back seat. I'm sorry, you're breaking up with the microphone. Uh, gray pipe in the back seat. And Agent Green, you said you transported the defendant to the Powersheet County Sheriff's Office? Yes, I did. Uh, were you requested to do that? Yes, I was. Was anyone else in the vehicle with you? Uh, Special Agent Joe Arian. And do you recall approximately what time you left Yerby Farms? About 3.15 p.m. And how long did it take uh, for you to get to the Sheriff's Office? Uh, approximately 20 minutes. Did you have any conversations with the defendant during that time? Uh, no. When you arrived at the sheriff's office, what did you do? Uh, we went into the main lobby area where he uh, was taken, took a seat, and then I took a seat to do uh, uh, finish my paperwork that I was working on. Was anyone else present in the lobby? Uh, no, Joe Arian went back into the sheriff's office to talk with the case agent. Was the defendant offered anything to eat or drink? Uh, yeah, a short time later he was offered, a, uh, I believe, a pop or a water. And do you recall approximately how long you were at the sheriff's office? Approximately 20 minutes or so. And where did you go when you left the sheriff's office? Uh, we returned back to the Yarby Farms. And where was the defendant when you left the sheriff's office? Last time I saw him, he was in the lobby. Was any other law enforcement personnel sitting in the lobby prior I'm, to you leaving? No, there was not. Do you recall the approximate time you left the sheriff's office? Um, not off the top of my head. I, I would figure it's like uh, four, four, 345, four, close to 4 o'clock. And just to be clear, when you left the sheriff's office or the lobby, was there anybody else in the lobby other than the defendant? No. Nothing further, Your Honor. Defense may cross-examine. Agent Green, when you left Yerby Farms with Mr. Bahena, he didn't take his own vehicle? I uh, know he did not. Why not? I had no idea. I was, he was, I was asked by Joe Arian to ride him a ride to the sheriff's office. And that's common practice for agents to give him a ride in their squad vehicle or their state-issued vehicle, right? We have done that, yes. More common than not, right? We do have done that, yes, in the past. So in this situation, when Mr. Behena got to the sheriff's office, he's 20 minutes from his vehicle, right? Correct. Now, did you take a DNA sample from 
Mr. Behena? I did not. You were present for a DNA swab that was taken from another individual, though. Yes, I was. Who was that? Uh, the gentleman I was talking to was uh, Monroe... Uh, Chides? Yes, Chides, yeah. And he was also an employee of URB Farms? Yes, he was. Also an Hispanic? Yes, he was. In your briefing before you went to URB Farms, were agents told to get DNA swabs, cheek swabs, from every employee at URB Farms? That was my understanding, yes. Why? Uh, to gather for information if we had to do uh, evidence later, to cross compare evidence if the evidence is found. Concerning what? If there was DNA evidence found on a subject, on a victim that we could cross, exam cross uh, determine whether that was the same subject to that case. Okay, so you're looking for DNA to connect to the disappearance of Molly Tibbetts at this point? That'd be my understanding, yes. And you're doing what uh, you agents call a canvas, right? Correct. And explain to me in layman's terms what a canvas is. A canvas is when you f go interview people regarding what they've seen or what they saw pertaining to a, your case that you're currently working on. Okay. And to your knowledge, uh, all of Brooklyn basically had been canvassed, right? Correct. And to your knowledge, had any tips or leads come in before the lead on this black Malibu concerning any Hispanic individual and the disappearance of Molly Tibbetts? Based upon my limited time in doing the canvas, I don't believe so. When the canvas was done in Brooklyn, Iowa, did agents get a DNA swab from every household they went to? No. But yet they went to Yerby Farms and got a swab from every employee, right? That's, that was the understanding, yes. And when you were there, every employee you saw was Hispanic, right? Yes. And how many employees did you see? Uh, I, I assume there's six to eight, potentially. Okay. And how many officers total did this uh, canvas? Uh, approximately 12. Mr. Rivera was cooperative with you? Yes. Had you had any involvement or any contact with this case prior to August 20? Yes, we were assisted with the canvas in the previous days before in Brooklyn. Did you take any DNA samples then? No. Were you interviewing people who were Caucasian? Yes. And no one asked you to take any DNA samples from them? No. Nope. And who specifically made the call to take DNA samples from all the Hispanic employees? I believe it was case agent. That's Trent Vilda? Yep. Did he give any specific reasons why he wanted DNA swabs from each and every Hispanic employee? Uh-uh. Not to my recollection. Did you take a DNA sample from the owner of the dairy farm? I know he did not. Not he to my knowledge. Okay. And just so the record's clear, did you see the owner of the dairy farm? I met one of the owners, yes. Okay. Was he Hispanic? No. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Fries. Uh, Mr. Claver, any redirect? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Agent Green, did the defendant have his cell phone with him at the sheriff's office? In my recollection, yes. Did you observe the defendant using his cell phone at that time? Yes, he did. No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Freeze, anything further? No, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. You're excused. Thank you. Members of the jury, uh, we'll take a 10-minute recess at this time. want to remind you of your admonition. You can leave your notebooks where they are. And try to be back in about 10 minutes. Thank you.
Back on the record, uh, we're in the presence of the jury. Mr. Pahima is present along with the attorneys of record. State of Iowa may call its next witness. Our next witness is Pamela Romero. Mr. Romero, you want to step up here, please? Raise your right hand and I'll swear you. Do you swear and affirm the testimony about you will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? You. Okay. Mr. Romero, can you make your way over there and be seated, please? Watch your step. Yes. You may proceed when you're ready, Mr. Brown. Thank you, Judge. Ms. Romero, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, can you please uh, state your name for the record? Yes, my name is Pamela Romero. And uh, how do you spell your last name? R-O-M-E-R-O. -E uh, Ms. Romero, uh, com currently how are you employed? I am the Learning and Development Specialist at West Liberty Foods, located in West Liberty, Iowa. Okay. And what is Le West Liberty Foods? It's a turkey process um, meat factory. And how long have you worked for West Liberty Foods? It's going to be two years in June 26th of this year. Uh, do you have uh, any prior law enforcement experience? Yes. Can you please describe that for the jury? Yes. I graduated from um, Cedar Rapids Police Ac Academy back in 2015. Um, and I started working with the West Liberty Police Department for two and a half years. Later transferring to the Iowa City Police Department for 11 months. And I'm currently a part-timer with West Liberty Police Department. <clears throat> So when would you have left law enforcement, do you recall? Yes, it was December of 2018. And you live in West Liberty and now work there, correct? Yes. You have a family, is that right? That is right. You're married? Yes. How many children? Four. All right. And their uh, ages range? 20, 14, 10, and 14 months. And what are family reasons, the chief reason that you went back to West Liberty to work there? Family obligations. Do you, did you enjoy law enforcement? Yes. All right. Do you I hope did. to return to it full time at some point? Yes, I wish I could. Okay. You're getting ready to move, is that right? That is correct. Where are you going? Texas, um, 14 miles up north from Dallas. Is this a transfer for your husband? That is correct, yes. All right, uh, Ms. Romero, uh, take you back uh, to your law enforcement days. Mm -hmm. uh, as a police officer with West Liberty in Iowa City, did you receive any specific training in interview uh, techniques? Yes, when I was with the West Liberty Police Department, they sent me to training back in December of 2016 for the one of the CTK classes. And then I went back to the advanced class in February of 2017. Okay, whenever you say CTK classes, is that the, is that the uh, acronym for the officers that run the school? Yes. Uh, there are DCI agents, is that right? That is correct, yes. Um, so you take a basic class, mm -hmm. is that right? Yes. And how long does that last, if you know? Eight hours. Okay, and then the, the advanced class is a little bit longer? It is eight hours too, so it will go ahead and be a total of 16 hours. Okay. And what were your duties then with uh, West Liberty prior to transferring to Iowa City? I was a patrolling officer responding to service calls, community involvement, just the basic duties of a police officer. Do you investigate uh, criminal acts that were reported to the police department? Yes, sir, we do. do you have occasion to interview potential suspects? All the time, informal and formal. All right. And the same is true in Iowa City? That is correct, yes, in Iowa City too. Uh, were you a patrol officer there? Yes. All right. Did you work any particular shift in Iowa City? It was the night shift. Um, I believe at that time I was working 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. All right. Um, 
get us a bit of background on you. Um, do you speak Spanish? Yes. Um, how would you characterize your fluency? I am native speaker. Okay, what do you mean by that? I usually use my Spanish 90% on my daily routines at work with my family. We even have a, a rule at home that we cannot speak English. It has to be Spanish. Okay. So Spanish is your first language? Yes. Uh, were you born here in the United States? I was not. Where were I you was born? born in the uh, north part of uh, Mexico, Durango. Okay. When did you immigrate to the United States? Uh, back in 1989, I was 10 years old. Did you come here with your family? Yes, to the small town of West Liberty, Iowa. Okay. And did your <laughs> parents work at the same food processing plant that um, you work at now? Not my parents, but my brothers did. When did you learn English? I came here, I was enrolled in school. I was enrolled in fifth grade, so I learned English in school until I graduated from West Liberty. Okay. Did you go on to college? Yes. Where did you go to college? William Penn University. All right, and did you receive a degree? My associates, yes. Okay, and, okay, and associates in what area? Science degrees. I was going into teaching, and then I just completed the two years. Tell us again what the degree was in. Um, science um, degree, just getting the basics out towards my teaching degree. Did you go on to uh, receive a four-year degree? No one. Um, in your duties uh, at West Liberty uh, and Iowa City as a police officer, were you frequently called on to interact with Spanish-speaking uh, persons? Yes. Uh, both suspects and witnesses, I would assume? Yes. Did you have numerous occasions to interact with people in that way? Yes. In, in your law enforcement capacity? Yes. All right. Um, Ms. Romero, I want to direct your attention to July of 2018. Um, did you become aware of an investigation that was being conducted in Powshe County involving the disappearance of Molly Tibbetts? Yes, I, I was made aware. Okay, and were you requested to assist law enforcement uh, in speaking to potential Spanish-speaking witnesses? Yes, uh, the first time that I got involved uh, was with the Iowa City Police Department, and they um, told me that they needed assistance with the Hispanic community for me to go ahead and do interviews in Spanish. And how many days in July did you spend uh, in Powell Sheet County assisting in the investigation in mm. that manner? One day. Uh, moving forward to August 20th of 2018, were you contacted by law enforcement in Powell Sheet County to come to Montezuma? to interview a uh, person identified to you as Christian Rivera? Uh, when I was contacted, I was not made aware that I was gonna go ahead and interview uh, Mr. Rivera. I was uh, down, or I had the idea that I was called down there to assist again with my um, Spanish speaking skills. Okay, and did you come to Montezuma then on August the 20th of 2018 for that purpose? Yes. At some point, were you told that you were needed uh, to assist in the um, interview of the defendant? Yes. Uh, when when I were got you? I'm sorry. Go ahead. When I got there. Okay. When you arrived in Montezuma. Yes. And um, it may be obvious at this point, but why were you chosen uh, to be the person to interview the defendant? I was to the it was brought to the understanding that Mr. Rivera spoke Spanish, so be, me being a native speaker, it will be easier for me and him to communicate. Okay. And were you briefed uh, at any at the time by officers that were involved in the investigation as to what the facts were of the investigation to that point? Yes, DCI agents and FBI agents. At the time that you were requested to assist in the investigation had the body of Molly Tibbetts yet been located? No. Okay. 
whenever you came to um, Montezuma, did you come with any other Iowa City police officer? Yes, at that time I was traveling with um, Sergeant Fink. Sorry, say that again. So, um, Sergeant Fink. F-I-N-K? Yes. And what is uh, Sergeant Fink's first name? Um, is it Jeff? Yes. Sorry, that's okay. Whenever you uh, um, left Iowa City, where was the first place you went to then in Powashik County? We went to the Sheriff's Office in Powashik okay. County. Is that where you met with other officers that you've just described? Yes. And you were briefed on the investigation at that point? That is correct, yes. Uh, was that the uh, time when it was decided that you would attempt to interview the defendant, Christian Bahena Rivera? Yes. When was the first time that you met the defendant? It was at that time he was sitting out in the lobby and I was told by the DCI agents that he was out there, so I went out there to introduce myself. I told him who I was, told him I'm Officer Romero with Iowa City Police Department at the time, and told him, thank him for being there and for being patient and to let him know that it was gonna go ahead and be a few minutes for us to go ahead and bring him back. So you went out initially and introduced yourself? Yes. Then you went back uh, to where? Back to the room where the other agents were at. Whenever you met the defendant uh, the first time, um, was he with anybody else? No. Uh, did he appear to have a cell phone uh, at his disposal, at his use? He had his cell phone in his hands. Did he appear to be using it uh, by your observation? The motion that he had, he was leaning forward with the phone on his hand. Uh, where he was at in the uh, sheriff's office at Powell Sheet County in Montezuma, was that a secure area? Yes, okay. well, part of it, I'm guessing. I'm not really familiar with the area, okay. so the part where I was at, it was not secure. Okay, the lobby area where you met him? Correct. It okay. would have been open to the general public? Yes. Okay. You do identify yourself as a police officer? Yes. Were you wearing a uniform or badge or any type of insignia? No, I was not wearing the uniform, but I did have my gun, which uh, is required when you carry, you have to have your badge with you. So I did have my badge, but it was um, on my belt. I don't think it was seen by uh, Mr. Rivera. Uh, after speaking with officers, after introducing yourself to the defendant, uh, did you then go back out to the lobby to get him, uh, to bring him back to attempt an interview? Yes. Was uh, the defendant cooperative? Yes, he was. Okay. Where did you uh, take him uh, to be interviewed? We took him to one of the back interview rooms. Again, where it was at, I'm not very familiar with the building myself. It was just an interview room. Uh, did, did you take his phone away from him? No. Uh, were you pleasant with him? I, yes. In the manner that we're speaking here today? I believe I, this is the same tone that I was using with him. Okay. Whenever you showed him back to the interview room, did you uh, point out the exits to him? Yes, I made sure I knew where the exits were before I took him down. Um, when we were walking down, it was myself and Mr. Rivera, and I show him there's the exit sign right there. That means that it's an exit door. Okay. And uh, the door, was there a door on the uh, room that you conducted the interview in? Yes, there was a door which I showed to Mr. Rivera that the door was unlocked. Did you tell him he could leave at any time? Yes, I did. Was he agreeable to speak with you? Yes, he was. All right. Um, so up until this point, what language were you speaking with the defendant? Spanish. Right. When the interview began shortly after, uh, what language were you speaking with the defendant? Spanish. All right. And was the interview recorded? Yes, it was. Recorded by video? Yes. And audio? Yes. If we were to sit and watch the video and audio of this recorded interview, would we see two people speaking in Spanish? You will go ahead and see three people 
speaking Spanish. Uh, uh, Jeff Fink was, was, I'm sorry. Go Sergeant ahead. Jeff Fink, myself, and Mr. Rivera. Did the defendant ever converse with you in English? No. So unless we understand Spanish, we're not going to understand the video interview by watching it, correct? It will be difficult if you're not fluent in Spanish just because of the speed of the conversation. Okay. We'd have to be fluent in Spanish in order to understand it, in your opinion? In my opinion, yes. Agent Romero, are you able to translate your conversation that you had with uh, the defendant on the um, night of August 20th and morning of August 21st of 2018? Yes. Have you had an opportunity to review both video as well as transcripts prior to coming in here today? Yes. All right. And do you recall the interview also from your own memory as to what was said during that interview? Yes. Prior to going into the interview, um, Agent Romero, you did not know the location of Molly Tibbetts' body? No. Did you know um, that Molly Tibbetts' body had been covered by corn leaves and was located in a cornfield. Did you have that knowledge before talking to Christian Rivera or Christian Bahena Rivera? No. Did you know or have any knowledge as to the injuries uh, sustained by Molly Tibbetts that caused her death? No. Did you have any knowledge as to Molly Tibbetts' blood being located in the black Chevy Malibu? Did you have that knowledge? No. Because at that time, Molly Tibbetts had not been recovered, correct? That is correct. And no blood had been found at that point in the black Chevy Malibu, correct? Correct. Because it had not been analyzed yet by the DCI. Correct. Um, during your interview with... Uh, Mr. Rivera, um, overall, how would you describe his demeanor? He was friendly. We had a very friendly conversation. I thought so. Uh, we were very immersed in the conversation. I was making the questions. He was answering them. Very engaged. Did he ever appear to uh, not comprehend any question that you asked him? No. Did you ever uh, not comprehend any answer that he gave? No. Uh, at the beginning of the interview, um, Ms. Romero, did you speak with the defendant about the vehicle that he drove? Yes, at the beginning of the interview, we, I spoke to him about his uh, work em of employment, um, family history and the uh, vehicles that he had, um, who he lived with in his residence, and just report building. Okay, let's let's just speak specifically about the vehicle. We'll get okay. into the other things. But okay. um, did you talk to him about the vehicle that he drove? Yes. And what did he tell you about the vehicle that he drove? He actually told me that he had two vehicles. One was a black Malibu. Chevy Malibu that he had um, purchased from one of his cousins. I believe, if I do recall correctly, it was somewhere in Tama, a dealership, that he was making payments towards that car because the actual owner of that vehicle was his cousin. And then he also mentioned another uh, vehicle, an Altima, um, that he stated that he usually drove in the gravel back roads of the town because the um, information that he gave me is the reason why he did that is because the um, vehicle was not up to date with the registrations, the Altima. And the black Malibu, it was fine, so he was the one, he said that he drove that one around town. 
During the interview with uh, the defendant, did you allow him to uh, keep his cell phone? Yes. Did you uh, allow him to use his cell phone whenever he wanted to? Yes. Okay. All right, during the first part of the interview, you had mentioned earlier that you talked to him about his family? Yes. Uh, you, did you talk to him about his job? Yes. Uh, what did he tell you about his family and his job? He told me that he had been here seven years in the United States, four years in Brooklyn, working in um, the uh, farms that he stated that he was working at. He gave me uh, information about cousins, uncles, living in the closed areas. You had mentioned earlier that this was what you called rapport building. Yes. Is this something that you had been trained on with regard to conducting an interview? Yes. What's the purpose of rapport building? It's getting to know the person that you're talking to. And during this part of the interview, were you able to get to know uh, the defendant? Yes. Did you ask him where he was currently working? Yes. Where was that? Jeroby Farms. And did he tell you what his jobs were at Jeroby Farms? Yes, he did. He told me that when he started his employment, with Jeroby Farms, he was milking cows, and later he told me that he moved to another position that it was a lot easier, which it was cleaning the sections. All right. Before we move on to the next section of the um, interview, Ms. Romero, um, overall in this interview and interaction with the defendant, uh, did you take frequent breaks? Yes. Um, and. Do you know, it, on all of the uh, interactions that you had with him, was it always you and Jeff Fink that were in the room, or did were there times when one or the both of you would leave? There were times that one of the other ones will live. Um, I will. I was all the time with Mr. Rivera. Did you provide him food? Yes, I did. And the um, hours of the interview, I believe we gave him approximately eight to nine breaks. And did you provide him a full meal at one point? Yes, uh, there was a sandwich, and I even asked what um, beverage uh, was his preference, uh, and I provided that to him. And you allowed him time to eat that meal? He had approximately 23, 25 minutes to eat. And again, was he always tracking questions that you were asking him? Yes. All right. Did he appear sleepy to you at any time? Um, yes, maybe towards the end. I mean, at the end of the interview, everybody was tired. I was also tired myself. Okay. All right. Um, after the initial part of the interview, uh, did you then turn to whether or not uh, he knew, the defendant knew or had seen Molly Tibbetts? Yes. Uh, do you recall how far into the interview with him, as far as time, uh, that you raised Molly Tibbetts for the first time? Yes, I do not recall the exact time, but it was approximately an hour, an hour and 45 minutes into the interview. And do you know if it was before or after he had had something to eat? Do you recall? I do not recall. Uh, did you then begin to gather facts or attempt to gather facts about the defendant's possible knowledge of Molly Tibbetts' disappearance? Yes. What does he initially say with regard to Molly Tibbetts? Mr. Rivera told me that he had no idea who she was and she told me that he, she, he had never seen her. Um, did you have a photo of Molly Tibbetts that you showed the defendant? At that time, I pulled out one of the uh, posters, the flyers that had Molly Tibbetts' face. I put it in front of the uh, Mr. Rivera, and he um, looked at it, and he goes, yes, I have seen them around town. They are all over town. And at that point, he also added that he remembered um, seeing the 
Molly's boyfriend at one of the local gas stations. But initially he denied having uh, ever known Molly Tibbetts, is that true? That is true. Or having any contact with her? That is true. He stated he kept a picture of, or the copy of the poster flyer in his car. Um, at all points forward in the interview, um, Ms. Romero, sorry, I have to wait for them to switch. At all points forward in the interview, uh, Ms. Romero, with the defendant, um, was your understanding that you were talking about the disappearance of Molly Tibbetts with the defendant? Yes. And when you used the uh, terms her or she, were you referring to Molly Tibbetts? Yes. Uh, was it your understanding that the defendant did the same? Yes. Right. Um, was there a time then, just after raising uh, the uh, uh, bringing in Molly Tibbetts to the interview, was there a time during the interview that you then showed him a photo of a vehicle that was taken from surveillance in Brooklyn from the home of Logan Collins? Yes, so I was provided with um, three pictures of a black vehicle that was obtained, I was told by one of the DCI agents from the Logan, Logan um, Collins surveillance video, um, that photo showed the black Malibu. Okay. And had you received those three photos uh, at one of the breaks that you had taken during the interview? Yes. While you were at the Powell Sheet County Sheriff's Office? Yes. Did you show those photos to Christian Bahana Rivera? Yes, I did. How, I did, like, how did, hang on a second, sorry. It's, uh, how did you display them to him? I was just gonna say that I laid them out in front of him, the three pictures together. Okay. I said, um, can you please look at them for me? He looked at them and his response was, yes, that is my car. Did you even have to ask him if it was his car or did he just volunteer that? he volunteers say that that was his car. Uh, were these, these were uh, still shots taken from the surveillance camera, is that right? That is what I was told, yes. Did it have a time and date stamp on it? Yes, they did, which I pointed out to Mr. Rivera. He um, stated that, uh, yes, it was um, 1948 the time and July 18, the date. Okay, so 1948 would be 7.48 p.m.? Yes, RMA time. And the date would have been July 18th? Yes. So that date and time stamp would have been on the photocopy of the photo that you showed him? Yes. Um, did you ask him if he was the sole owner of the Malibu? I asked him if he was driving the vehicle that date and time. He said, yes, that was me. I asked him, is anyone else in the car with you at that time and that particular date? He goes, no, it was just me. Were you aware at that point, uh, Ms. Romero, that a runner had been seen on the surveillance video taken from Logan Collins' residence. Yes, there right. was one of the pictures, it was um, shown that there was a person. Okay. And did you point that out to the defendant? Yes, I pointed out to the person that was running and that's what I told Mr. Rivera. You see this person that is running? He said, yes, she was running. Okay, so he used the term she? Yes. Okay, now the picture that you would have shown him would have been essentially a shadow dot, is that right? That is right. All right. Was there any way to tell um, in the photo that you used with the defendant if it was male or female? No. And he used the term her? Yes.
All right. Um, Ms. Romero, at this point, um, did the defendant then describe seeing anyone running in Brooklyn at about that time on that date? Yes, he went on describing that it was a female um, girl running. Did he say at this point how many uh, times he observed uh, this female runner while in Brooklyn? Mr. Rivera told me that he saw her three times. He saw her first, turn around, came back. He stated that she even waved at him and smiled. And then he went back and that is when he continued doing what he was doing at that time. Okay, what was it that he was supposedly doing in Brooklyn? He stated that he was trying to find his way around town, that he was heading to his uncle's residence to obtain a vacuum cleaner. So he, he told you that he saw a female running yes. on three different occasions. Did he ever place himself out on the county blacktop uh, east of Brooklyn? The way that Mr. Rivera described that um, first um, site of the female was, it was in a paved road near a curb. Did he ever um, indicate that he got out of his car or engaged her in any way? Not at that particular time. All right. Um, so he never would have had any contact with Molly Tibbetts other than, at least that's what he said, uh, um, never had any contact with her other than seeing her? At that time, yes. After seeing her the last time, the third time, uh, where did he say he went uh, in Brooklyn? Ms. Rivera told me that he lost track of her, that he lost sight of her, and continued on his way to pick up the vacuum cleaner. Did he then say where he went? Um, and to town, I am guessing, because he kept, he told me that he was going to his uncle's residence, which it was in the trailer court inside Brooklyn. Now, um, did you have a discussion with the defendant about the appearance of the runner, female runner that he saw? Yes, I asked her what he thought of the female runner first, and he his answer was, uh, I found her attractive. I asked him what she was wearing he said black shirts maybe a top sport bra and he continued describing he did not say the name of it but he just said one of those things that you put on to measure your steps or to hold your cell phone or to what hold, hold your cell phone? cell phone okay did he ever use any other term other than attractive to uh describe the runner that he saw? He stated at one point that she, he thought that she was hot. All right. Uh, Ms. Romero, during this conversation, does the defendant ever admit to you that he had anything to do with harming Molly Tibbetts? Right at that time, he said no. Right. Um, a break was taken uh, after this discussion? Yes. During that break, uh, was uh, Christian Rivera uh, placed into custody? Yes. All right. That and is. did the interview then continue um, in the vehicle later on that morning? Yes. So later on in the morning at approximately 4.30 a.m., did you, uh, Christian Rivera, or Christian Bahena Rivera, and another officer leave the sheriff's office? Yes, Officer Kivi, um, an agent from FBI, and myself and Mr. Rivera left the office. And where did you go? We went to Mr. Rivera's residence and um, jury, the farm that he worked at. I the believe Yerby it was Farms. a property, yes. All right. That's an area uh, in, um, Southeast of Brooklyn, correct? I'm not familiar with the area, but yes, that's Powashi County.
Then did you proceed to a rural area in far eastern Powasheet County? We landed um, in a cornfield. Okay, I'm gonna show you a uh, photo. Okay. States, it's the... Do you see States Exhibit 3 there on the screen, Ms. Romero? Yes, I do. Um, this location that is on the map is 2478 460th Avenue. Do you see that? Yes, I do. Uh, what kind of road is that? Gravel Road. All right. Um, is it, even for a rural county, is that area pretty rural? Yes. Okay. It was a cornfield. It was cornfields all around us. Okay. Let's, that's a good point. Um, this is July or uh, August of 2018, correct? Yes. So the corn is up, right? Uh, that, yes. It was August 21st already. Yes. Oh, right. So uh, the corn is uh, up and it is at least about head high. Would you agree? Yes. Okay. The grass was pretty tall too. All right. The nearest town to where this location is that you went with Mr. Uh, Rivera, the defendant, is nearest the town of Guernsey. Is that right? Yes. And it's almost to the Iowa County uh, line. Would that be true? Yes. Okay. And in the vehicle, did you, uh, were you in the vehicle with uh, the defendant roadside at that location that we see here on Exhibit 3? Yes. Okay, we're going to look at it, Exhibit, I believe it's 25. All right, Exhibit 25, is this the general area that you would have been parked roadside with? Uh, the defendant, Christian Bahena Rivera. Yes, that's where we were parked. Okay, to the right uh, on this photo, uh, there is an opening to a cornfield, is that correct? That is correct. And through that area, who was located there? Molly Tibbetts' body. Okay. Did you ever go out to uh, the location of the body? Yes. Okay. And um, were other officers present at this location? Yes, there were. Okay. Which direction are we looking here? That we would be looking back to the east. Would that be accurate? That will be accurate. Okay. And then exhibit number 26, if we can see that. Uh, the opening to that cornfield there is on the left on exhibit 26. Do you see that? Yes. And generally, is this area show where you were parked in the vehicle with the defendant? Yes. We were close to that white vehicle. Say that again. We were like in front of that, where that white vehicle is right now, like in front of that. Like the, it, those vehicles were not there then, but it was close to that area. Okay, so a little bit further up the road is what I'm hearing you say. Yes. And this is looking back to the west. Would that be true? That will be true. Um, was there any fence between the two uh, posts or uh, to cross into the cornfield? No, there wasn't. All right, you can take that down. Thanks. Ms. Romero, whenever you uh, got back into the vehicle, did you read the defendant as Miranda warnings? Yes, I did. So okay. inside the vehicle was Mr. Rivera, myself, and um, Sergeant Jeff Fink. And did he waive those? Yes, he wanted to talk to me. All right, and did you then ask him what happened uh, with, between he and Molly Tibbetts? I asked Mr. Rivera to give me all the details that he could remember since he um, approached Molly Tibbetts. All right. What was the first thing the defendant told you about seeing a female on July 18th of 2018 near Brooklyn, Iowa at or near 7.45 p.m.? He told me he um, saw her running um, again three times one of those times he parked his car behind her, ran after her or jogged after her, came um, close to her that she noticed him, 
she turns around, makes the attempt to use his cell phone to call the police. At this point, Mr. Rivera to, um, told me that he got angry and that that is when they started fighting. Okay. All right, let's break that apart just a bit. So the defendant at this on this occasion, this is while you were seated in the car roadside that we just saw, correct? Yes. All right. He admits seeing Molly Tibbetts? Yes. Or, and he indicates that he followed her? Yes. Okay, whenever he say that he, he said that he followed her, did he indicate that he followed her in his car for a period? Yes. Um, did he then tell you that he stopped his car? He said, I parked my car, yes. And he got out of his vehicle? And I started jogging behind her. Okay. Is there um, another officer in the vehicle that you were in interviewing him that also spoke Spanish? Yes, um, Sergeant Jeff Fink okay. um, speaks Spanish. And does Officer Fink um, ask him if that was on 385th Avenue? Yes, he did. And what did the defendant respond? Mr. Rivera confirmed that it was. Confirmed that he had seen Molly Tibbetts on 385th Three. Avenue? Yes. You told us that uh, he jogged towards her and that a cell phone was used, is that correct? That is what he said, Mr. Rivera said that she made the attempt to use the cell phone, later telling me that she told him that she was going to call the police. And what was the defendant's reaction to Molly Tibbetts' threat to call the police? Mr. Rivera said that he got angry. Did he indicate that there was any type of physical altercation? After he stated that he got angry, he stated that they started fighting. Was he any more specific at this point as to what the fight was? He, say, um, he said that Molly tried to slap him and was um, screaming at him. Did this uh, make him angry? Mr. Rivera said that this is when he became angry. Now, what is the next thing that Christian Rivera told you that he remembers uh, while he was on this road with Molly Tibbetts? So once Mr. Rivera told me that he got um, angry and he remembered them starting fighting, he stated that usually when he became, becomes angry or when he gets mad, he blocks out. So the next thing that he told me was that um, he remember him driving and looking down into his legs and finding the earbuds that belonged to Molly. And that is when he remembered that he had Molly in the back of his vehicle in the trunk. He did not tell you that he remembered putting her in the trunk. He stated that he did not remember putting her inside the car. He did not remember how she got there, but he, does, he did remember how he took her out of the vehicle. Okay. But he did remember her being in the trunk? Yes. And where were the earbuds at specifically in his car? Where did he, Molly's, or the earbuds he described, where did he uh, put them? He stated that he was driving, looked down on his legs. That's how he put it. <laughs> and that is when he sat them. Did the defendant indicate to you where he took Molly Tibbetts? Yes, at the location where we were at. at. To a cornfield? To the cornfield. Does the defendant describe at this point, any injuries to Molly Tibbetts' body? He remembers that there was blood. Um, he told me that he took her out of the car, put her on top of his shoulder, carried her inside into the cornfield, laying her down, covering her with corn leaves, and leaving right away. 
Is he specific at all concerning the injuries to Molly Tibbetts as to what part of her body those injuries were located? At one point I asked him, was it the head that it was bleeding? Was it um, the forehead? He stated um, he, with his hand in motion, the neck. So did he actually say the neck or did he just point to his neck? He stated and he pointed to the neck. Did he describe for you uh, how her body felt when he carried her? I asked him how the um, her body felt uh, against his body when he was carrying her. He s told me that it felt like a person that had just fainted. Um, did the defendant ever tell you or uh, remember for you any weapon that was used to cause the injuries to Molly Tibbetts that would have caused her to bleed? No, he did not. He couldn't remember it? He could not remember. Okay. Is it fair to say, uh, Ms. Romero, that uh, in your conversation with Christian Rivera roadside at the cornfield, uh, that the recall by the defendant was um, not complete. Yes, I was trying to get more, more details from him. Okay. And it was not complete in terms of he never discussed a weapon that was used to harm Molly Tibbetts. That is correct. Uh, he did not provide you turn by turn um, a drive that he took to the cornfield, correct? Correct. And there may have been some other details left out, is that right? Yes, that's what I was understanding. Um, did the defendant provide you any information concerning the condition of his clothing? Yes, he told me that he had no um, shirt on because it was um, stained with blood. I'm sorry, I didn't... It, he had no shirt on because it was stained with blood. Okay. Or it could no be, be bloody. He had no shirt on at what point? When he was carrying her inside the cornfield. Uh, after he covers uh, Molly Tibbetts with corn leaves, did he leave yes, right away? Yes, he said I left right away. You asked him again, uh, in this part of the interview uh, concerning putting her in the car. Do you recall that? Yes. He, he do, doesn't remember putting Molly Tibbetts in the vehicle, but remembers taking her out. Is that accurate? That is accurate. Um, after going through this um, uh, statement with the defendant, did you press him then for more details? Yes, I did. Because of those gaps that we just mentioned, is that right? Yes. Did you want to get all of the information that you could possibly get from yes. the defendant? Yes. That was your goal? That was my goal. All right. Did you ever then confront him by asking him if you ever, did you ever well, did you ever then press him then on more details? How did you go about doing that? Yes, so um, I went to ask him, Mr. Rivera, please just let me know, give me more details, how she got into the car, what happened to her, what did you do to her? Um, he, his answer was, I brought you here, didn't I? Um, so that means that I did it. I don't remember how I did it. So he tells you that he, you were pressing him for more details. Yes. He tells you that he brought you all the way out to her. Yes. So that means I did it, right? It was a question, is that correct? That is how he put it, yes. And then he follows that with, I don't know how I did it, is that correct? That is correct.
Did you press him at one point on more details by asking him what changes? He goes, nothing changes. Um, I brought you out here. And then he restates what he told me earlier. Okay. All right, and towards the end of this interaction with the defendant, you come back to asking him about uh, being scared uh, when she would, when Molly uh, Tibbetts threatened to call the police. Is that right? Yes. Uh, what was his reaction, or what was his uh, answer to that particular statement? He said that he got scared, um, but he got angry too. And he was angry about her threatening to call the police? Yes. Did you ask him after this happened, did you think about it? Yes. What I was did. his react what was his answer to that? He goes, not really. And when people you asked him when people were looking for Molly Tibbetts, did you ask him what were you thinking? Yes. What, what was his reaction to that? He, I remember he just shrugged his shoulder and he goes, I didn't think about it. Did he say that he felt bad? No. Or did he say that he blocked out everything or tried to? The part where he got angry, yes. This interaction with uh, Christian Rivera, or Christian Bahena Rivera at the roadside, uh, Ms. Romero lasted how long in the car? What? Uh, again, I don't have exact times, but it was probably an hour or so. Okay. And at any point in time, did you go back into the cornfield to observe the area where Molly Tibbetts had been found? No. Just to finish this up, um, did you drive back to the sheriff's office with the defendant? Yes. No, not with the defendant. Okay, but you went back? Yes. Uh, the man that you've just recounted uh, these statements that he gave to you on August 20th and 21st, is he seated here in the courtroom? Yes, he is. Please point to him and describe what he's wearing. He is right there, and he is wearing a light blue shirt with the gray dress pants. Your Honor, the record should reflect uh, that Ms. Romero has identified the defendant, Christian Bahena Rivera. Record will so reflect. That's all I have. Thank you. Members of the jury, um, let's take a 10-minute uh, recess at this time. I want to remind you of your admonition. Uh, you can leave your notebooks where they are. And uh, again, we'll be back in about 10 minutes. And uh, Ms. Romero, you may step down also, of course.